welcome to episode 48 of Trusty Hogs. I'm Catherine Bauer. And I'm Helen Bauer. There we go. This is obviously a podcast about our perfect lives. There are no issues there. We're fine. And um, we're still coming to you from the old Edinburgh Fringe. Catherine had a mental breakdown. Let's do the show! Through the fog, step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah, you're gonna give them your problems and they will solve them. Maybe they won't, and that's your problem. They'll have guests, and Andrew White on the tech. Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs. Trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. Let's do the show! Not what happened. That is like, um... Can I explain? Yeah. Um... I committed at the start of this. I was like, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to like post every day on the internet about how I'm going to do something for my mental health. Turns out that gave me a big mental stress, actually. I was like, it's just like another thing I had to do every day. And then I also had to be happy. And then I also had to post about it. And I also had to be on the internet. And it was actually just causing me a lot of stress. Who could have seen this coming, you guys? Everyone, everyone saw it coming. And now people keep tweeting me being like, should we be worried that the mental fringe isn't happening anymore? Catherine, what do you need? And I'm like, I need to be left alone i will say this obviously so if anyone listening to this we are now back in london we're not still at the edinburgh fringe but we thought we'd squeeze in another episode while we were up here just so we yeah. can get another really cool international guest as far as your mental fringe goes mm. everyone thought that's a choice <laughs> everyone but it's also hard to say to someone who is doing active steps for their mental health that's really rude that's a choice it's a it's rude i believed in you that's really rude what do you mean they were like as in like they were mocking me no one was mocking you just all in our own heads okay i feel like comedians only have those thoughts out loud <laughs> yeah. i feel like you're telling me that i'm being bullied okay let's stop this do you want to take a minute i feel like you're really sad no, are people actually just mocking No, they me? weren't. I was saying in a jokey way, but I feel like I said it wrong, so now you've taken it to your heart. <laughs> Ellen's bullying me on the podcast. Oh, wait, are we <laughs> actually doing this? Yeah. I thought I was like, take a minute as in like being deadly serious. What, you can fake cry, but I can't, bitch? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Catherine, no one is talking Welcome about you, but I was worried you believed life. that. That's Honestly, horrible. Every single episode is just you being like... Poor Helen, poor Catherine. What about poor Catherine? The bottom of your Fair world just fell out there. Fair play. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> Thank you. I oh. thought you genuinely thought everyone was mocking I you. I could not and give I was a just fuck saying it in a jokey way, and then I freaked the fuck out. It's important to stress I care what four people think of me. Which four? You. And? My mama. And? Sister. Georgie. Oh, Georgie, yeah. And? Not and, sister. And myself. <laughs> oh, Aww, that's, nice. That's a really good four. Really close the circle. There are other people who like will always love me, so I don't have to worry about that as much. Like my brother and my sister and um my friend Karen. Yeah, I like, love Karen. Yeah, there's like not even any reason for me to worry about that because like I could kill someone and Karen would be like, Deserved it. You're a good person. Everyone You're a good person. <laughs> Everyone. Um you, you worry about my love for you going. No, like as in I, I would like take a. No, question. no, no. You, you, you worry about the love. You I should. Oh, sure, yeah. I think, it, I think it seems pretty conditional. A couple more shit. We weren't like really that. friends until I started giving you work every week. You I'm don't joking. think I was your friend before? Okay, this is the worst. I hate Edinburgh. <laughs> I hate it. We are all the worst versions of ourselves. I'm not proud of this. I'm I hate myself you. right now. No. No, no. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you, you dare. You can't turn don't. the tables. Don't you dare. No Poor one's letting you. Poor fat Helen. <laughs> Poor fat Helen. You keep trying to make this a thing and it's not a thing. It <laughs> is a thing. Poor fat Helen is now Poor a thing. Poor fat Helen has not a single tear in her eyes so she can fuck poor off. Poor fat Helen has cried all the tears she can. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to put context for poor fat Helen because you told us this off the podcast. Whoopsie daisies. Okay, so <laughs> poor fat Helen. Okay, so obviously poor Helen is the cute thing I do for yeah. attention, which yeah. now apparently everyone can do and use against me, which I think <laughs> is fucking bullshit. But I was walking with some comedians and loads of people ran ahead of me and then I turned to Heidi Regan and went, oh, poor fat Helen. And she laughed, because it's funny. And then now I'm chasing that dragon, like an absolute <laughs> skaghead. I cannot stop. <laughs> and then I was at dinner with like Nick Ellery, Eddie, <gasps> Will, Anya. We went to this like really good noodle place. What's it called? 
I don't know. It's like above a shop. No, thank you. And you wouldn't, but it's like so good. But what's it called? I can't remember. Okay, you know what? Rico recommended it to Nick. Okay, all right, I'll check it out. We'll ask you, Rico. Basically, um, and then everyone's food arrived, but mine hadn't arrived, and I went, poor fat Helen. (laughs) And I got a response again, because it's so funny. So then I said to my new agent, I was like, can we refer to me as poor fat Helen from now onwards? She got very upset, didn't like it. Why? But then, I don't know, people don't want to say poor fat Helen without me doing a context to it before. Can I tell you my moment of the fringe? Yeah. So after we bombed real hard at our own gig, gigless, and then you had that, like, we had that awkward moment where you were realising on stage that um, somebody had been stabbed who you just made a joke about, and there was a whole thing. Um, uh, Thank you, Catherine. My favourite moment of The Fringe goes to... We brought on the next. G- oh, I don't know what sound I just made. Um, <laughs> we knew the but I really I'll, I'll like. I'll that up. Don't worry. Got it out. Um, so, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Glottal stop. <laughs> fuck you. I'm so tired. That's staying in. I'm no. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm keeping the fake crying. Everything's staying in. This is a no edit. This is a no edit episode. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We will see it's how It's a no edit episode. But my favourite moment of the fringe is when I got off stage and I came back down to the back and your agent was just sitting there going, all I could hear was, Yes, I think what might be good is if you just put, um, if you just get BBC News app on your phone and then get alerts. <laughs> <laughs> My lack of awareness of the world has now taken over into my job. That my agent had to be like, so what I do is on BBC News, it gives me a push on notification when something significant happens. So you just know. Oh my God, it was so funny. I was like, no, it's a no edit episode. That mm-hmm. snort stays in. Oh, um, I love, I... <laughs> I'm super into it. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, finally. There's someone to help me. <laughs> There's you, two of us now. Yeah, it's. I think I've chosen my new agent because my agent quit. For anyone who doesn't know, so I had to find a new agent. She was exhausted. She was so tired. <laughs> she was so tired. It's a lot. It's a lot. She's like 24, but you'd never know it. She's going on holiday with me in January, though. My old agent. Oh god. We go ski together. S- stuck. It'd be really syndrome. nice. But um, now I've got a new agent. But I found myself a lovely um, Irish mammy like Catherine. Yeah, you did. You literally found yeah. as close as to me uh, as close to me as you could get. In we an went agent. to the same college. I was yeah. like, this is perfect. We all went for a meeting together, and Catherine and your agent were literally just like sharing college stories. Oh, yeah. uni, random uni. people, and we were just all like, what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, just uni for people who are British. Sorry, I was yeah. so good in that meeting. You were um, awful in that everybody meeting. Everybody stopped taking notes every time you spoke. So we had like a trusty <laughs> hogs meeting because we're like trying to sort of like find a way that we can sort of like expand the podcast, but also like still have us sort of like doing it and leading it. And obviously that means we started going to meetings together, which is so sorry, weird. So you made it sound like we all sometimes have other people leading it. First, A, it's not like a meeting, I'm leading it. B, <laughs> we'll always be hosting. We're just trying to, we're just trying to get more listeners. Mm. But the meeting was so good because we were talking about like, oh, would we ever be able to do like sponsored ads for anyone? So I said, yes, Disneyland and Thought Park. And Whereas every I was, time I made a suggestion, everyone stopped writing in their just, notepads. We just unclick the pen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that poor man. We were just like, uh, we could do moon cups. We could do dildos. Puzzles. We could do puzzles. 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 You could see him being like, are puzzles lucrative? I don't think so. <laughs> I just don't think I've <laughs> ever had a jigsaw puzzle advertised on a podcast before. I wonder why. I Yeah. Well, mm. no, you say that, but podcasts are for like is like the new radio so why can't yeah. jigsaws be for the radio people that makes sense yeah okay and fair, I, yeah, fair. I, Andrew actually said to me after the meeting finished didn't you you went I thought your suggestions were actually really good because I was like we could go you to lied like, to her face I thought and I thought the Disney one was good you think somebody's going to pay us to go to Disneyland? I think yes. we can get to that, yeah. Like, like, you're hogs, both... hogs, please, no, please you're message delusional. us. You're delusional. Please message us and say, yes, I would listen to a road trip, like a couple of episodes of you guys Helen, going to Disneyland. Can together. I tell you something? This week, um, Em was making clips and, and she was like, any notes on the clips? And I was like, oh, it'd be real cool if there was one where I was talking. And then um, Em was like, oh, that's, I would love to, but um, I can't because there's no clips where Helen's not shouting over you. <laughs> And truly, she was so right. And I was like, oh, that can't. And then just now I was like, and um, I just, I guess it just takes me back to poor Catherine. Poor fat Catherine. (laughs) (laughs) Poor fat Catherine. Poor fat Catherine. (laughs) Poor fat Catherine. (laughs) Catherine, Catherine, Catherine. You, You tell them why you want to go to Disneyland. 
I don't want to go to Disneyland. I don't want to go. I would never go to Disneyland with you. And I don't want to go. I'm good, thanks. Poor fat Helen. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's good that poor fat Catherine and poor fat Helen don't go together because we might not be able to go on ridey together. I don't want no to. Space. <laughs> <laughs> no space. No space. Oh my god. Um yeah, so um the mental health thing I think I've stopped. I wanted to say something about that, then I thought I shouldn't. No, go on, be mean. And no, it wasn't me. Go on. It was just that I knew <laughs> it stopped being good for your mental health on day nine. <laughs> what was day nine? Because you called me and you started scheduling your mental health. <laughs> I'm like, do you, can you do something with me on the 21st? Are you she free on the 21st? She me in the morning and went, hi, so I'm now scheduling my mental health wellness. <laughs> and I was like, it's, it's too early. I had like a Weetabix in my mouth. I was very confused. <laughs> and I went, okay. And she went, so would it be good for your brain to go to the Chihuahua Cafe at 9 a.m. on the 21st? I was like, Catherine, I'm, I'm gone. And literally not, you start scheduling wellness. And I knew, I knew that moment. It's over. You know, it's over. I just, I just also, because she scheduled a palm reading. Oh. As if you would you. do that for your for mental you. health. I know, but then you're starting to take my mental health into consideration bring, instead of yours. But I will say bringing you joy gives me weird joy. Weird joy? Yeah, I really kind of... Because you love Helen. Also, you're just so expressive oh. and effusive, and I could never be that excited about anything. So I just think, well, I'll let you yeah. be excited, and then I live vicariously. It's very sweet. Oh, poor fat Catherine. No. <laughs> <laughs> Also, does like, Fat Andrew want to say anything? Stop. Oh, oh, but my friend Abby, well, Abby Clark, friend of the podcast, yeah. went, went to the Chihuahua Cafe, and one of the Chihuahuas was, was Bruiser Bruce, uh, in Legally in Blonde. Production Fuck of, off. I met this Bruiser about four years ago. <laughs> oh, you have? You told me about this. I have, and they do frame it in a way that is misleading. Mm. No offense to the Chihuahua Cafe, but they do say, she was bruiser in Legally Blonde, and then they mutter under their breath in the Scottish touring production. <laughs> and I feel like that has to be. Surely very the original bruiser's gone now, long gone. Oh, guys, long guys, gone. stop that! Every dog we liked growing up What's is wrong dead. with the pair of you. You have to be. You have to face these things straight on. Okay. How's your mental health doing, Catherine? <laughs> um, She's not scheduling anymore. Well, no, it's going um, fine. Everything's fine. Um, I, I will say a low, low was um, I was asked to write this article for The Eye on breakups during pandemics. So I <laughs> obviously didn't want to write about that. So I sort of like circumnavigated and talked about all the kinds of breakups I'd heard about on my tour because that was like quite a useful yeah. thing for perspective and also very funny. And they added a tagline. They had a headline, fine, which in of itself was like, okay, it was like, um, it was like, can, can laughter even dry the tears of a clown or something? Oh. And then they put in like a Google stock image of a sad clown <laughs> beside a photo of my actual face. So it's me and this graphic. And truly oh, that was when I was like, no amount of taking pictures of the fudge factory can fix this. <laughs> Are you looking it up, Andrew? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. I want to see. This is amazing. That's when I kind of stopped doing the mental health fringe thing because I was like, I was like, you know what? I think I'm just gonna drink. Actually, I think I'm just gonna drink because apparently, <laughs> even when you try to be chipper, there's no. But there's no getting away from it here. There is no getting away. You try and spend time by yourself to like make sure you're like rested and everything like that. But then you feel lonely and you feel like everyone's having fun without you and they're possibly having more fun because you're not there, which is a weird trick your brain plays. Yeah. But then when you are out and about, you feel maybe sometimes unwelcome in places. Like people don't actually yep. want me here. So you don't really know what to be. If you go see a show, you feel bad because you're not talking to people or resting. But if you don't see a show, you feel rude because you haven't gone to see them. It's like whatever you do is wrong mm -hmm. apart from binging <laughs> <laughs> you know you're right there's a lot you can't do you can't like you can't really exercise because there's so much compulsory walking here that mm -hmm. you're like exhausted that's already. enough yeah yeah on top of which you can't really flirt with anybody because everybody here is people you work with mm -hmm. so you can't do okay. that and you shouldn't fine <laughs> and then it's like you can't go for a quiet anything because literally everywhere is full of people who know you 
Yeah, it's not ideal. It's God, not we're ideal. such fucking moan bags. This is an artistic festival we have volunteered to do ourselves. We're paying to do it. It's not like mm. we're yeah. having a great time. Well, I'm actually, I actually have been having this last week. I've had a lot of fun. When I stopped with the mental health stuff and just started, just started having fun. <laughs> I'm just loving that your message <laughs> from like when we first started doing this podcast is now like when I stopped trying to take care of myself and started drinking, I guess everything was better. And you know what? Helen's advice is always right. Put everyone in the well. No, I'm just... Don't take care of yourselves. Drink and binge and put everyone in the well. No, I'm just like, at this <laughs> festival, I have not been letting myself have some fun. And for once, I've been letting myself have a little bit of fun and make some silly choices about, like, going to bed on time and, like, maybe having too many drinks of caffeine in the evening. And honestly, I've been having a nice time. I've been seeing my friends. You're seeing your friends and our guests just arrived. What? I'm we sorry, I, love I cannot tell you how lucky we are to have this man here. This is like a big deal guest. I'm losing my mind. Everyone, please, for Trusty Hogs, welcome David, David O'Doherty. Thank you so much to all of our executive producers, Guy Goodman, Simon Moore, Zinina Bautista, Mary Fox, Annie Tonner, Sarah Harke Deacon, and Who Oliver. We met? we met her. Oh my god, she has love, such lovely love. Cur- lovely curls, so supportive. Mm. And Oliver Jago. Do you yes. want to read the producers? Producers! Thank you so much to Richard Bicknell, L, Richard Bold, Neil Redmond, Victoria Hutchinson, Emma Walton, Karen and David Bull, Harold Van Dyke, Kara Leach, Tim and Dom, David Walker, Rachel R, Anthony Conway, Sidney Cashmore, Claire Owen Jones, Jess and Nick, Zoe, Joe Holmes, Sarah and Molly, Alex Pugh, Josie W. Amy, Raya Fink, Cordelia, Rachel Page. Wow. Oh my God. It is so weird seeing all these names and how many people's like faces I I've know. seen over these this guys last have really couple of weeks. They've really supported us during the French. Like, Thank I'm just you thinking, so much. I saw like Emma yesterday with her parents. Yeah. And then I saw, yep, like Sarah Hockadeacon, obviously Elle's been up. Truly, thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you for supporting our live shows, for supporting the podcast. And hey, if you're not a producer yet, why the hell not? Come on. Join us for £5 a month. You can get an extra episode every single week. And to be honest, that's where we tell all of our secrets. (laughs) Hello, David O'Doherty. You're here. Thanks, Bo Hart. It's so nice to be here. Honestly, a privilege to have you in the studio. That's too much. I no, it's I mean it with all of my heart, an honor, truly a divine moment for me. I love you so much. I love your show so much. I went to see it, loved it. Also was obsessed with you when I was very young. Yeah, this is the problem, the very young thing. Yeah. I went to see um, Emily Wilson's show the other night. It's, read, it's an <gasps> incredible show about how she was on X Factor. Mm-hmm. Really? She tries to explain what 1999 was like. <laughs> the audience and I was like oh the first year I came to Edinburgh <laughs> uh, all my life landmarks since that's that age horrendous. are here horrendous. and I also think you're a legend thank you very much Alan and you're welcome happy birthday to you thank oh you my God. so much this must cease it's when did this start um 2020 2020 so for two years, David O'Darty's been saying happy birthday to you most days. Weekly. Yeah, Weekly. I just thought it was a funny Weekly. thing to do. I think I once <laughs> retweeted something that Helen was like, I'm doing this gig. Or maybe it was when Gigless was on. Or yeah, something. it was your birthday yeah. gig, right? Yeah. So I said happy birthday to you and it got quite a big response. So then I just continued to keep saying happy birthday. Until like diminishing returns. <laughs> sure. But technically, I feel we all have a birthday to celebrate, be it the next one or the last one. That's so can you so not just true. take it as a... I always get excited. Whenever you say happy birthday, I'm like, oh my God, is it? Like, because yeah. you never know. You know what I mean? Because you lose track of dates sometimes. I assume you're not doing gifts with this, with this regularity. No, I've never got a gift. Whoa, I just get like David. a tweet or a message or an Instagram. It's Let me tell you a great trick. If okay. you ever want to wish someone happy birthday and make it really special, yeah. just go to YouTube and put in happy birthday Helen or the yeah. person's name. And you'll generally find, you know, an American family singing <laughs> an acapella version of a song called <laughs> happy birthday Helen. And there's no shortage of... Uh, these kind of videos that's to just amazing I think you did send me one of those thank you yeah, yeah and thank you thank nice. you happy birthday to you too happy and birthday when is your birthday you. to all the listeners 
um, just before Christmas. <gasps> You're yeah. a Christmas baby, like Jesus. I'm a Jamir Aquarius, I think. Jamir Aquarius. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. you are from the 90s. That's Vir- exciting. Virtual insanity is my star sign. <laughs> <laughs> I would love it if that was a star. I'm an Aries. I wish you could see Helen's face right now because it's she's genuinely trying to laugh along, but she's also furious that astrology is not being taken seriously. <laughs> she's like, cool, but also... I'm a fire sign. I want to join in, but I also want us to be respectful of the religion. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly that. Catherine's also a fire sign. Thanks for having me on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, Wait, um, so you've been doing Edinburgh since 1999? In 1999, uh, I... Oh, let's get this beef out of the way. Okay, please. So in 1999, I came here... Finally. I won the Channel 4 So You Think You're Funny newcomer competition. Whoa. We know it well. The runner-up was 16-year-old Josie Long. I was 22. And then Oh, my gosh. She, she almost beat you when she was Oh, no. She years. won the BBC New Comedy Awards, which was... The, and get this. It was broadcast on BBC One with Bob Monkhouse as the host. Oh, God. Like, Bob Monkhouse, who did comedy in the 1950s. Like, the <laughs> shots of him after the Second World War. <laughs> Somehow, I get in at the end. That's so Oh, old. my God, I that am. is... But it was the live... The final was live broadcast. It was broadcast as a one-hour TV <gasps> spectacular. So, is your beef with Bob or Josie? No, the beef is... So, to this day, Josie... Brings up that she beat me in the BBC New Comedy Awards. Great, great. And says that I've never gotten over it. So she did a feature interview with the Times just before this festival. And they used that as the pull quote. I beat David O'Doherty and he's never gotten over it. So let me say right here on TH that uh, I beat Josie. So get this, get the group. So you're not over I know I understand you also beat her in something else. The group that that I crushed with my manly <laughs> mm. palms. Your comedy lols. O'Doherty wins. Runner up. <laughs> long. Other, other people that year? Jimmy Carr. What's what? he doing? He's taken his name off the Wikipedia as one of the losers of it. Yes. <laughs> no! Well, it's no! Not there. So good! It's so not good! There. So and good! Everyone else's name Allegedly. is there. Allegedly! Amazing! Allegedly. No, you can go into Wikipedia and you can see all the edits that have been done, so you can check. Ooh. I'll show you. Uh, Russell Howard was in that. Whoa. Uh, Andy Zaltzman. Julia Cowan. Yeah, every single person went on to be oh a God, pro. Oh, God, you're so old. So, oh, my goodness. Yeah, there were no mobile phones. There was... You That's had to, crazy. Had to rewind videos before you brought them back what? to the shop. What? What? Oh, my God. Did you I remember even... that, though. Do you remember... Rewi- yeah, I remember sure, rewinding sure. videos at the van. Three videos for three nights for three pounds. It's wow. a good deal. It's too many good videos. Deal. It's a good deal. No, I've got a brother and a sister, so we get a video each. Do you have three separate video machines? No, or? we'd have to wait. Uh, how would you decide the order then that you watch them? Um, me first. <laughs> and then I'd let my brother and sister fight it out. And then I'd cry that they bullied me to my parents. Nice. Can you think of a single movie that the th- three of you would have watched together? <gasps> Go on. Yeah. One movie that me and my brother, we've got three very different vibes. Yeah. Explain to David. He needs to understand. Okay, so my big brother's two... We're all very close in age. My big brother's two years older than me. Mm. I love Ted. I think he's great. He does a lot of political activism. Now out of jail. Shout out to Ted Bauer. <laughs> Whee! Freedom at last. He used to work at McDonald's in Brixton, but he got fired because he tried to stand and make a protest about <laughs> workers' rights. And now he's trying to do education um, unions with the headmasters and headmistresses of Britain. We love Ted, but very yeah. different to me. And my little sister. I almost prefer him. <laughs> yeah. Everyone prefers Helen, Ted. Helen truly hates workers' rights. Go on. I just, I, I get the song. You know, like there's power in a union, power sip, in the sip land. On that Starbucks, okay. there, Helen. <laughs> Take a good gulp of that and continue. And then my little sister <laughs> is two years younger than me. She's also autistic and has a very low mental age. So she would only ever rent Thumbelina and watch it on repeat. I loved Thumbelina. Whereas I was very much like Little Women with Renona Ryder. Yeah. <gasps> so good. Like so very posy good. with my films. And I think my brother was more like. Kill Bill, Lord of the Rings. Um, he loved watching Battlestar Galactica and like Star Warsy stuff. Jesus, so you really didn't have any common ground. We had no common ground apart from blood. Oh yeah, uh, which stuff we would do in like for, like for, for blood, the movie. <laughs> oh okay, the the okay. This brings me to my first major topic okay. of the podcast. Oh my god, I love that you're ho- you're the host now. Uh, welcome to Dave David Chat with me, <laughs> David O'Doherty. <laughs> um, so first major topic. Let's hear it. I went to see Rapunzel 
a student production of Rapunzel three days ago with a, yes. with a th- four-year-old. Yes! Wow, how And it? they obviously, so she knew Rapunzel from Tangled. Yeah, of course. Which they obviously couldn't get the rights for or anything to do. Now, <laughs> she she's going to have grown up with a very confusing idea of theatre because she'd seen Beauty and the Beast a few days before. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get the rights for that. But they'd written other songs. No, like, stop it. I am setting the table for a big party. And she's just like, what? When Let this- us be your host. Be your host. Be your host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what are you talking about? Was this kid like having the weirdest trip? Was yes. she like, did I come up in the wrong place? Yes. That's that hell. every, t- f- to her, theatre is when you have a memory of a book <laughs> or a cherished movie and then you absolutely ruin it. <laughs> so, this was based on the freaking Brothers Grimm tale of Rapunzel. No. Are you joking? Wunderschön. Ich liebe das. Yeah. Geil. Yeah. yeah. So dark. Uh, Turbo Titten Monkey Ash Geil. Geil. <laughs> so that's, uh, I worked in Germany uh, one summer. Oh, yeah? And with a cool German guy. And I'd say Geil, meaning cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he would say uh, Turbo Titten Geil, which literally means <laughs> Horny. Turbo Tits Cool. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's very it's disgusting. And then, and then Monkey Turbo Tits Cool. Affen. Oh. So... Uh, it's this was one of the spookiest <laughs> narratives ever. There's an awful lot of witches in it who keep pointing at Rapunzel's belly and being like, "And I will kill one of the children that resides in here." What? And, so, no, I, I, I don't know this version. This I is am amazing. I'm bouncing a four year old <laughs> on my knee who's like. Oh, no. <laughs> and it was in the round, so I was like, we can't go. Oh, we have to stay God. until the end. So in fairness to this version of Rapunzel, she had her hair in a bag. It was rope. It was fine. There was no tower. They, were, they used a stool for a tower. It's the theatre. This was it. all fine. Uh, she got into it as the thing went along. In fairness, the magic of theatre. And then at the very end, Rapunzel goes, I'll be in a, anyone's photo if they want in the car park. <gasps> and... I, w- I thought we might be scarpering and Leonie is like we're going to the photo, car park yeah. I need a photo with Rapunzel Aww. so I have a very cute fan pic of <laughs> That's so cute. Rapunzel with um, a four year old question I assume on everyone's mind How, you know the kid yeah mm. what's the relation <laughs> Uh, the kid, to go back to the, as everything does in my life, Catherine, to go back to the 1999 Channel 4, so you think... Are you serious? The child belongs to the person I defeated in that comedy competition, Josie Long. Oh, my God. So no. Josie does her show, and Josie's partner has another show, and some days there's a clash. You have to look after their kid to prove you're over it when you're clearly not over it? <laughs> and Leanne and, and I have lived together in the fringe in That's the past. Really and she's cute. one of those people... That she's like, all right, David, let's go. And we go around the city and every time we see a Josie picture, (laughs) like a poster for for her show, it's quite a useful thing because she's like, "Uh, where's my mummy? And I'll be like, there, on a giant A1 poster. She goes over and whispers to the poster and then waves at it. (gasps) Yeah, she doesn't uh, miss her mum anymore. That's too cute. I can't handle it. How would you tell us that this far into the fringe, I'm going to cry? That's so cute. So if you're ever babysitting and... I was the other day. It looks like it might be a struggling issue. All you have to do is cover the city you're in with (laughs) posters of the child's parents. I was literally with Sarah Barron's kid the other day going on a Pokemon hunt. But outside the context of Edinburgh Fringe, that just makes the kid think their parents are missing. (laughs) (laughs) Or like the dictators of that country, a huge Saddam Hussein picture. Populist heroes. What the hell? No one refers to Saddam Hussein in conversation anymore. That was impressive. Now that is a throwback (laughs) as well. David's very old. (laughs) More of that. Like Saddam Hussein. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, Saddam Hussein came to see my Fringe show in 2003. Oh, when he was a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he loved to laugh. Before you young to... people cancelled him or whatever it was. That's what you do, isn't it? The young people. I am. Um, I absolutely loved your show. Have you been enjoying doing it? Um. Yeah, I've been uh, very much enjoying. I live with Rose Matafeo. Yeah. So good. And we have a very nice time. Good. Uh, lounging it... around. 
If you've been doing it since 1999, how do you... Because you always seem genuinely ecstatic and excited when you get on stage. And like as excited as... And you work as hard on your shows when you really, let's be honest, at this stage could absolutely phone it in. Hey. How do you stay so excited and ambitious about it? I do love doing it. That helps. I definitely... And then uh, in Ireland, uh, we had a pandemic. Oh my uh, God, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Are you... <laughs> The, the potato famine. The, uh, I knew you were going to That was an it. epidemic. It re... Was it not? No, I think it was a... Yeah, it was a famine. It was, it was a, a famine. famine. What? Yeah. Yeah, but a famine and epidemic... Oh. Epidemic's like a big problem. It was a, a plague problem. and then a famine. So I think you think you have some expertise in the <laughs> potato famine. You know I have expertise on the it. Irish Waxwork Museum version no, you of... you also know that I do know a lot about this. You know I know my rebel songs. Don't y- sing them. Y- no. y- yes, I do know that you know them. And also because I went to the museum. So in the, this is what I think of with the Irish Waxwork uh-huh. Museum. So there's a, there's, I've never been to it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but my friends have been to it and they take a waxwork of your hand. Yes, I did it with Alison Spittle. She got one done. So it was two grown ups and they were a couple at the time. And so one did the proverbial, oh, what, how, do, how do we describe oh, like that? The, like, oh, a, like a the, fist the with an op- a wank shape. Yeah. And the other did the pointy finger. Going into the wank shape because they were a couple. It was actually quite a beautiful That's thing. That's so funny. In two different coats. Yeah, but get this. So <gasps> I, uh, I had a sort of a trophy cabinet in my house and nothing to put in it. I bought it in a junk <laughs> shop, so I put it in it, and then because you thought you'd get the BBC New Comedy Award. <laughs> <laughs> Winter still saving that space, <laughs> yeah, baby. Winter became spring, and spring became summer, and that relationship didn't work out. And the way my house is, the light sort of comes through the window into the summer, and it hit the trophy cabinet. And I arrived back one day, and the <laughs> finger peen going into the um, uh, hand badge had just melted oh, no. into a pile at the bottom. Yeah, but it was... That's beautiful. It was, yeah, it was very beautiful. I'm sorry, that is beautiful. I wish you'd taken a picture of it every single day and a picture of them every single day as their relationship withered because that would be an amazing moment. Oh, like when you take pictures of people like the like uh, problems with crack cocaine or whatever. Remember those pictures at school where it's like, this is you on like the first day of crack, but this is you one year into crack? Yes. Oh. Yeah, like the exact same thing. We're on the same page. Yeah, we- it's flowing. We had. I remember a guy called Duncan came into our school to tell us not to become alcoholics. Was he Duncan? Was, was he a Garda? He was not a Garda. He oh. was um, an AA a man from AA. Oh yeah, sure. And I remember this is this is terribly bad. I remember him saying, uh, "It got so bad once. I woke up in a hotel room, <laughs> and I didn't know. I rang down to reception, not knowing what language the receptionist would speak. And I remember as a fourteen-year-old going." This is one of the best things I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah. problem, isn't it? It's like, you were in a city, but you didn't know where in yeah. the world. That's like, so come on. That sounds so cool. In my school, we had um, these people who like are the religious um, against alcohol. Called They're a group called Pioneers in Ireland. Oh, yeah. And you would take a vow to be a, become a pioneer, and you would what? consequently get a badge, right? And it, like, But it would always be some man who came in who was like devoid of even an awareness of joy. Yeah. And he'd wander in and he'd tell you about every night he'd ruined for everyone else by not having any fun. And then he was like, but the main thing is, God will be really happy about it. And truly, it was like the inverse of that where it was like, I never want to be you. I wasn't drinking at that stage, but, but it made don't. me want to. Yeah. Um, did you, Bohart, did you take the pledge? The pledge? Yeah. I did indeed. So in... Uh, to the listeners, when you do your confirmation, when you're uh, like 10 point. or 11. Uh-huh. You, you oh, is that when you marry Jesus, when all the young mm. girls marry Jesus? No, that's the communion. That's communion. Okay. Whoopsies. You're already married. This is more like you're renewing your vows. Yeah. You're, oh, but, uh, you're year 11 now. It's time to renew yeah. your vows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And there's a point. Yeah. Fucking creepy as Let's shit. Let's pump there's this a, up a notch. There's a point in it where the bishop goes, anyone who would like to remain in ab- abstinent from alcohol till they're 18. I don't know if it's stand up now or if it's just promise the Lord you will not drink. And yeah. Yeah. yeah Remember Darrow Breeden used to have a joke which was uh, what religion makes liars out of 11 year olds? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much everyone within three years. I stuck yeah. to the pledge. 
Did you? Didn't, didn't drink had my first. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, first kiss at nineteen, baby. Wow. She's a cool dude. Wait, wait, you can't drink or kiss until. Oh you're... no, that part I just added myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you added on extra rules. No, no, that was my personality made it such. Like, what is the question? No, nobody wanted to kiss. I me. don't think we had anyone at our school come in to talk about <laughs> alcohol or drugs, but we did have um, we had a couples day, Excuse where like me? a couples day where different couples come in and talk about their relationships. What? I know, I wow. still think this is weird. Mm. It was like a PSHE day, like personal social health education day. And then we had couples coming in. And I remember like, there was like a really old couple. There was someone who like got divorced and like new relationship, like step parents. And then there was a couple who were young and they cheated on each other, but still remained together because they openly discussed it. Wow. I remember thinking like, fair fucking play for you for coming in in front of a room full of 13 year olds being like, I cheated on him, she cheated on me, who gives a shit? That's very different. Isn't it's it? very it's modern. Different. That's like, I can't, the closest thing to a couple's day we had is sometimes a nun and a priest would come in. <laughs> <laughs> and that'd be it. Like truly that'd be it. What are you talking about? I remember um, we had sex ed in our school and there was sex, uh, like a, a genuinely, like absolutely fury filled parent teacher meeting beforehand where three or four of the parents had decided that it was completely inappropriate that they teach us that like we might have periods. Um <sighs> And my mom was wow. like, my mom honestly loved every second of it. I even remember being 11 and her coming in and being like, let me tell you the tea. I oh was my like, God. Like she was like, we don't like this lady. We don't like this lady. We don't like this lady. But yeah, there was like a walkout situation where they, they settled on, we would have sex ed, but there would be an invitation to walk out at the beginning. So like these three wow. kids with real lame moms had to be like, let us know what they said after you. Take notes. <laughs> no! And they were put in a different room with like silences on their ears, just like rocking back and forward until it's done. Not quite. Awful. Wow. Well, they should have taken a vow to the Lord that they wouldn't have their periods till they were 18. <laughs> then, uh, but uh, I think a that good was Christian girl would. Mm-hmm. One of the key things of growing up in Ireland was that it really equipped you with cynicism from a very early age. As in, that was because I had prod, uh, my mother's a Protestant and my father's a jazz musician. Which is even worse. Uh, and so, so they're both just making up their own rules, are they? Well, the whole thing was uh, the priest would be like, and remember, it's Friday tomorrow, so you should all eat fish. You'll give him fish. And mum would be like, absolutely. And then what? would just get in the car with me and be like, we were, we're having like McDonald's. A, yeah, 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 completely. Yeah. Like it was just very clear that this was just a bullshit exercise that you not, which is why when the whole thing oh, collapsed yeah. so quickly, it, no one was remotely surprised. Yeah. Did you eat fish on a Friday? Yeah. Did you eat fish on a Friday? Well, predominantly, yeah. But but also, my family are like, I think quite Catholic mm. as things go. Yeah. You know, my dad's a member of the clergy. Yes. So um, now he wasn't when I was growing up, but um, we generally did. And um, I, I have to say, I no complaints from me. I absolutely love smoke, smoked haddock. <laughs> that was my smoked fave. haddock. I had a bit of smoked haddock every Friday. Because yeah, what 11 year old doesn't love going home for <laughs> smoked haddock on a Friday night before she reaffirms her pledge to God? The, <laughs> the problem with a lot of Catholicism, sorry, we're go, going off on our Catholicism tangent now. No, no, I'm, it just makes me feel better because I, learn. I am learning a lot about Ireland because I feel like I am, I'm like becoming Irish. It always yeah. became an argument about these insignificant so i like a classic argument would be uh sorry father we should have fish on a friday yes do prawns count as fish i'd be like yes what about pa- paella if it has chorizo in it yeah i, I don't know I don't, sh- shut up boys do we more just got groceries. rice what's the question yeah. just constantly bargaining with the lord yeah. like, like if i have a cod liver oil capsule can i go kfc exactly yeah. so good. wait a second did you go to an old boys school yeah oh my god that's my idea of hell was it hard yeah i hated it that's yeah. horrific i'm so sorry it's fine it um it probably led to some so my dad was a piano my dad is a piano player my dad's yeah, he is. A, so cool. 84 so my father is this jazz musician yeah. in ireland where he spent his whole life working in these incredible tunes and flying to la and making albums so no one cool. knows any of his work but he wrote Whoa. the song that you have to learn in school about how to cross the road <gasps> remember one look for a safe place Shut Two, up. don't worry stop and wait yeah he wrote the safe cross code and so that would be the thing at a birthday what party. Dad would have been working on some orchestral piece for six trumpets, and everybody would be like, "Do this, do the cross the road song." <laughs> and, uh, so I yeah. want to hear the cross the road song That's in full. Incredible. Can you send me a link to it? Yeah. The the problem with it is the I remember at the time the 
The Everyone's British a critic. Cro- Everyone's a critic. The British Cross the Road song was really simple. It was when like, you're walking down the street, is this it? mind your head and watch your feet. Oh, yeah. If you don't it. stay alert, you could end up getting hurt. You've got to <laughs> stop and think and you'll be king of the road. Really? Yeah, oh, that, that was our one. I mean, the problem is she hasn't broached the tough issue of crossing the road, which is why <laughs> you got to stop and think and listen. Just walked around her own block <laughs> for years and years. Would this be, it's been broadcast on RT1 from yeah. 50, would this it? Or we'll play it. It, oh. It's sung by Brendan Grace, who was the jungle got priest it. from Father Ted. No. And so I've got to, okay, there's a YouTube advert, but uh, I'll, I'll get it up. It, um, it, it's a seven point road crossing. Oh, it's seven nice points. Thorough. Yeah. A Here we go. You're a jazz musician. I think yeah. this would be this it. This is though. so cool. Your dad's fine. Lord the court. One, two, three. This is my dad. Here we go. So this is Brendan Grace singing this. Remember, look for a safe place. Don't hurry, stop and wait. I mean, this is sort of banger. Look all around and listen before you cross the road. What Remember, the let all the this traffic pass. Just a warning. Walking straight across you. Keep watching. That's the safe cross code. That is that's a lot better. That is a lot better. That is a banger. Yeah. That is a banger. That was amazing. It, it's, uh, yeah, so that was my father. What was so, it like growing up with him? That must have been amazing. Well, what? what was cool was, so my father was the musical director of The Late Late Show, which is like the Fuck longest running off. TV show. In yeah, the I know what it is. Are you fucking kidding? Yeah, so, but this was in the 70s when you just played. So get this, on the same month in 1972, my dad played with Fred Astaire and Bob Marley. Because <gasps> the local band uh, just sat in no. with whoever the musicians were. So yeah, this was, I was, it was definitely a showbiz kind of a family, but it was the dirty end, it was the non-glamour end of showbiz. I think which is, to go back to why do I like doing this? I really like the nuts and bolts of putting a show together. Yeah. And I'm still absolutely delighted that people want to come Okay, see good call back to the initial question, but I swear to God, everyone in Ireland, you do all know each other and everyone knows a celebrity because Ireland's so small, like every other person is famous. And we call I it Ireland. I literally only just found out that Ire- Ireland. <laughs> Ireland. 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 No, no, Ireland. Just Ireland. 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 Yeah. yeah I don't Ireland. even know how it's said. Ireland. Okay. So close for me, though. That very good, Helen. Because mm. I literally <laughs> just found out my friend and yours, Neil O'Rourke, yeah. who we all know, mm. been him for years, his great uncle was a two term president of Ireland. Which one? I don't know. What? Wow. Great uncle. His <laughs> mum's uncle was the president of Ireland twice. You know. I wonder what era. It must be Patrick Hillary, maybe. I don't know. There aren't very many. Oh, he does look a bit like Patrick Hillary. The I literally found this out yesterday. That's crazy. I'll We're find out. Such, such hobnobbers. But everyone is like, and like Neil O'Rourke. That's crazy. Mad. Hey, um, do we have um, a... What's the name of your great grand uncle? I want, I want to Google him. Love you. The, uh, um, so, so... This, so my great grandparents were revolutionaries, like around the establishment IRA? of the, yeah. the IRA. Yeah, well, it was the yeah. original uh, IRA. Oh, it was called the IRB then, which was it the was. Irish Republican Brotherhood, which is a oh. secret organization. And so my great grandmother was this sort of famous person who organized the women's uh, movement. Really? And who? she was called Kitty O'Doherty. She's got a great Wikipedia page. If wow. Anyone wants to look it up. Um, Does it say where she came in the BBC New Comedy Award? She was unplaced. Oh, oh no! no. But no. Apparently, apparently she was very funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently she was because yeah. she, she went on. To, she wrote books because the way that a lot of the revolutionaries made money in the 1920s was they kind of wrote books about their experience of the revolutionary period, and Whoa. she would just write the book for you. And yeah, so she was like a ghostwriter for them. A legend. Anyway, what's amazing is. So that was my great grandparents and then their children, which is my grandfather was one of them. It was a group of wild people who did wild things in Ireland in Love the this. 1930s. But one of them was Fehan uh, O'Doherty, Father Fehan. Fehan. Fehan, F E I C H A N, I think. I N on the. Uh, I am. Sorry, I'm did you just correct the Irishman? I've got it on, I've got it on the right, Wikipedia. Let's get the, let's <laughs> get the impression to a minimum. There you go. You spell it whatever way you want, David, in our language. Do you, know what, do you know what he did in Ireland from um, the 1960s till his death in 1988? He was Ireland's official exorcist. Fuck off. Yeah, he was did a, we have exorcism? Yeah, yeah, we did. There, there was 
uh, like Rome had an official appointed exorcist in every country. He was he was like a psychologist. So I think I don't think he was. He, uh, well, I think he would go off in the middle of the night, and people would be having what we'd now call episodes or breakdowns yeah. or whatever. And he, he would be able to wipe help the devil them out of them a little bit. Well, theoretically, that's what he was doing. But oh my god! So I watched the Maeve Higgins film yes. about exorcisms in yes. Ireland Extra- and like she, extraordinary, so yeah. good. It's so funny. But like, I am obsessed with this. So yeah. like, did he go round do the exorcism and then the family the next day would give them tea and say thank you so much? There's someone down the road we're not sure about. Kind of. I think Whoa. that was because it works on word of mouth. It's the exact same as fringe exorcisms. You don't <laughs> honestly. It is. It's a word of mouth industry. <laughs> You've got a lot in common with Fehan. Yeah, I do. A lot. Oh, that's, uh, you think I, people coming to my show are, exer- the, the act of laughter is demons leaving their bodies. A hundred and ten percent. Never that thought about it. It's either um, demons leaving your body or power, because I do believe Monsters, Inc. has a point, and that <laughs> laughter makes power. So it's both of those two things. Wow. So it's an exorcism power, and then because it's word of mouthy, because it's like, how would an exorcist get their start, right? Because it's so tricky. Right. Someone has to lie for you at first. Go. He did a really good job at mine. Watch, imagine the Bowers all getting their separate videos out, <laughs> and Helen insisting it's Monster Inc. again, and then she <laughs> she delivers her one hour lecture afterwards, her TED talk on how <laughs> the monsters are in fact contemporary exorcists. Sully, <laughs> Sully is like Uncle Fan. Oh my God, that's incredible. You are on his um, Wikipedia page. Whoa. Uh, Fane's grandson is the comedian David O'Dotty. <gasps> there you I, go. I wish you guys would stop trying to say the name. Um, hey, Fan. Hey, please stop <laughs> it. Um, Fane over here and Fan over here. No, but they're both wrong. Okay. Um, here's my question: Is I know we need to do a listener problem, but um, David's kind of brought his own podcast, and I know that you made I'm so you made sorry. no, no, it's wonderful. But I know you wanted to make your first um, clearly pre-planned point. But did you have other um, things you wanted to get to before we did the listener problem, or do you feel you've covered your? I feel my major topics at the fringe so far <laughs> have been uh, Rapunzel. Yeah, we've, mm. defi- we've definitely Check. dealt mm. with that. Uh, fascinating Aida. So they're in the room before me, okay. and I just I love them. So they're they're like in the era of no musical comedy. They yeah. were doing it in the seventies and the eighties, cool. and I love them so much. Have you been to see the show? Yeah, it's one of the most incredible shows I've ever seen. Really? So I meet them every night afterwards. They're uh, uh, I think two of them are in their seventies. They just can tell you what it was like in the 1974 Fringe. You know, like, oh, oh, I love this. I love this. Um, I strongly advise people to go and see it. Okay. It's, wow. Yeah. We will. So that's a, sorry, that's a... They're going to that clash with me, unfortunately. That's such but. a great show. Fascinating, Aida. Mm. Yes. Okay, any further uh, significant points? Um, I don't think I... If I have another one, I'll just come out I will it. say for anyone who's not a friend who wants to see Fascinating Idea, they often do Leicester Square Theatre, if mm. I've got this right. I think they do pop down quite a bit. Yeah, and okay. they've got loads online as well. There's loads online. All right, well. great. Um, are you ready for a listener problem? Oh, are you I'm feeling not, wise? Are you feeling helpful? I really... I'm I'm very much enjoying this. Thank you very much. I hope <laughs> I haven't ruined your podcast. Are you kidding? We're having a... You're, that's such an Irish thing to be like, I'm a, I've been a lovely guest and I've had a little bit of a chat and oh, now, s- now I'm apologising for being here actually and I'm very sorry that I've taken up your time. No, we wanted you here. You're one of the few men we've had on. It's a thrill. Can I just say I really think you should do Who Do You Think You Are as a TV show. Oh yeah, you'd be great. Except the problem is I kind of know who I am. No, 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 <laughs> there'll be more. Yes. It'd be fun if they found something that just shook everything about you. You were like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. You had one uncle who's done nothing and is the most boring man around. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be someone there who's been a doctor who's literally, literally done nothing no and just one in Ireland knows him. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think you are? Go on. Okay. Uh, this is from H. Hi, Hi H. H. Um, I'm in a same-sex relationship with my girlfriend. Congrats. And, and we'll be celebrating four lovely years together nice. in August 2022. To celebrate this, we've planned a weekend at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Brackets, Whoa. we're coming to see both of your shows on the weekend of the 20th. Oh. Thank but you. We've already seen you. Thank you yes, so much. It's been and gone Thank by you the for it's time it's gone out. Yeah. Sorry if we were mean to you. They w- H and uh, other walked out of both of your shows. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Sad. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> You've ruined our four years. Go on. <laughs> My problem slash dilemma is this. I love stand-up comedy and I'm extremely expressive when I'm at a show. I'm laughing. I'm engaging because I just want whoever I'm watching to have a good audience Great. whilst they bear their soul to us. Gorgeous. My girlfriend, on the other hand, sits with dead eyes Oh yeah. and acts as if she has no soul, no laughing, but the occasional slight exhale through her nose. We come out of the oh. show and I'm like, oh no, you hated it. And she's like, 
What are you on about? I had the best time ever. I want to know if it would be acceptable for me to not sit with her at the comedy shows, uh, uh, even though it's our anniversary weekend, so that I'm not associated with someone in the crowd who has a face like a slap yeah. pass. Wow. 10 out of 10, I hope. I, I'm trying to think now of the couples in my shows last weekend. Really? Because all I can think about is whether or not the girlfriend makes any sound when she comes. <laughs> Do you think there's a link between one and the other? There has to be, surely. Like, if you're gonna like, there's there's a certain type of person who's like, I really want them to know that they're doing a great job, and there's another kind of person who exhales through their nose and says, "Are you kidding? That was great." <laughs> I, think I just, would just can't believe it. To answer the question, a hundred percent split up. Like smiling, <laughs> oh my, you know what they were the asking. Row, split up, and then the other one just sit in a, a dark, dank corner where no one oh, can you ever just see you. Split up for the show, don't split up for. The I think also maybe split up, but like I, mean, I just the, think for the show, a hundred percent split up. The face mask era was very difficult. I think for mm-hmm. us because mm-hmm. m- most people aren't very expressive with their eyes. I remember like yeah. actually asking the audience can you please be more animated because yeah. sometimes get those eyebrows in, in all the action. yeah no wear the see-through masks that are good for deaf people oh, everyone yeah. do that so I can just get yes yeah. mm. the, the, so I used to or I sometimes do it it's like if I'm doing a two half show sometimes to go into half time I'll be like it's half time you're all gonna go off and talk about me behind my back and decide if this is funny, <laughs> but I'm going to do it in front of you. I'm going to review the front row because in most of the venues we play, I've you, seen you, do this. you can only see about 12 people yeah. and you're amazing. A part of your brain is just judging how well the show's going mm-hmm. based on their uh, expressions. Oh yeah. So this is not uncommon. Yeah. The, the concept of the couple where one person is loving it and the other person just needs a vibe makeover. Oh my God. Have you ever been to either of our shows? That's pretty much all straight couples. The woman will be like, Meh! And the yes. man will be like, why, why is this happening But then you address right? it and it, it goes happening? wrong. I did that literally like five days ago. I was like, oh, she's really into it and you don't want to be here. And he went, no, I love you. I book tickets all the time. Yes. I was like, no, you don't. Like, don't smile then. Because like my dad's never hugged me. Like, yeah. you're going to have to do something. Yeah, do something. Please try. Please so it try. is, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. But uh, each to their own. Like, if... Disagree. She is in, is in joy. I, th- I think embrace it. I think don't sit apart. Just sit there so then the performer can look at the two of you and make a reasoned judgment that this is just one of those wonky couples. Yeah, I would have to say, I, I think you should sit together oh, for a different wrong. reason. Yeah. I think that you have to spread the cunts out. So I think you want laugh mm. or sad face, laugh or sad face, yeah. laugh or sad face. So um, I think sit beside her and then maybe try to find um, uh, you, are you an you No, no, mode. miserable cunts to the back, happy people at the front. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, what Catherine seems to be going for here is a cunt section, yeah. whereby all of the misery guts all, but like how no, do you No, 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 I'm saying every second one. Start? I'm saying every second one. Like if you know your partner's going to be a dick, then maybe Make sure you're sat beside them and then hopefully your friends, if you know they're... Then so you're sort yes. of like guess hoeing the audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. I agree them with down. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think all the... I'm, I want the section, like, cunts at the back. Yeah. Happy, really thick people. Cunts people that would laugh at me, something Joe that's just like a funny right. noise, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, they'll go like... And they'll go... Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> like, that sort of level, front row. The problem I'm, is you'll have to conduct a sort of uh, X Factor type audition beforehand <laughs> in the corridor where you, you stream them into the two. So you go this way, you go this... You know, you... And you... I want you up that, those stairs. That's what I'm going to do. And I reckon I could pick them out just from just like them in the queue. I can tell you who's going to like my show just from looking at them. <gasps> do, have you ever got it wrong though and it's so upsetting? Yes, yeah. but in the, in the other way, I have occasionally, I will be honest, I have occasionally profiled audiences because they've been so old, I've thought, there's no way they're going to enjoy this. And then they've been absolute sickos and loved every second of it. Yeah. Like real perverts, yeah. actually. So that was great. I mean, I remember it from the flyering era where I would oh. try and profile people by, you can have one, not you, not and, they, <laughs> and the not yous were always the people who were like, sorry, what's your flyer? And I'd be like, no flyers. And just Never hiding them mind. up my t-shirt then, yeah. It's for a ghost tour bus. It's the pedo ghost bus. You wouldn't, you wouldn't like <laughs> it. I would so ride on the pedo ghost bus. Oh, you God. can meet the ghost of pedophiles gone. You're trash. Come on. You're trash. What a You're ghost trash. bus. Thanks so much for coming in. Wasn't it lovely to have you? I have I have terribly enjoyed it. Terribly enjoyed it. Terribly enjoyed it. 
Uh, we really appreciated having you. And um, where can people find yeah, your show? Yeah, as if someone's just thinking that she doesn't follow David already. Um, <laughs> where I, can they find you on the internet? Yeah, I am. I am. I'm frequently on the internet, and yeah. So I have a, I have a dual career. I write children's books yes, for yeah, yeah. The, the under twelves, and then I tell rude jokes in sweaty rooms to the <sighs> over. 16s. I don't know. I was in that room the other night, and you were talking about flashlights, and there was definitely a child beside oh, me. I know. I'm. So, it's. It's so hard to talk about flashlights in it's a way tricky. that twelve-year-olds can relate to. Hard to make it family-friendly, actually. <laughs> I, I, Twelve-year-olds relate to flashlights. I, to, to the listeners, uh, I was trapped on an island for the first nine months of <laughs> lockdown with my parents, and I was asking nature to send me a gift. <laughs> and one day, a flashlight washed up on the beach. <laughs> it had seaweed. And that's his story and he's sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> that seaweed growing in it. Yeah. Incredible. It's okay. Beautiful. But they can find you on at David O'Doherty, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. Do you, do you TikTok? You'll find me all those things. No, I think that's I think that's that's a bit good for too far. I'm, I'm forty six. Good for you. Oh my god, good for one. you. Absolutely. You're just I'm just thirty one and I don't I need to catch up. You, yeah, you can still I know I still need to do it. I know yeah, I haven't quite got do. the excuse yet. Um, Soon though. Soon. Say thank you to David. Thank you for having me. David. I Thank love you for this. having you, David. Thank you for having you, David. David O'Doherty, everybody. I'm sorry Ooh. for all the bad things a man have done in the world. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You can't just end our podcast. No, 100%. Cut it. <laughs>